Uh, well, this is a bit of an experiment, as you can imagine, uh, because the focus of the, this day is very, very much on assessment and feedback. So this is what we focused in on uh, for this particular session. Um, good bit I need to do is just pass on. The aim of this uh, session, the good bit of it, is really for you to uh, get together in groups, possibly between two and five, um, and Angela and Martin and I will come round and talk to each of the groups. So I'm thinking about three, maybe four groups. I don't know what you think, Martin. But you can think about the grouping as I as I talk. I think maybe one there, one front half of their side, one back. Comes out of three groups of five. Yes. Okay. So we could we could. <laughs> but if you do, if you find the group of five is a bit big for yes. for the question that we're asking, I'm very happy. We're very happy if you split into a smaller group. So uh, the, fo the focus is I'm going to spend about 10 minutes introducing some key ideas, including uh, principles of Chickering and Ganson on engagement, and uh, introducing the two, I've got two forms which I would like you, each of your groups to have a go at filling in, because we're going to leave you about 20 minutes, hopefully, to uh, find an example. The, the key of this is that you pick one example module between the, the group of you, and, and, and an example of the assessment that's currently set. And the aim of this exercise is to assess how that assessment is supports or doesn't support uh, Chickering and Gamson's principles, okay? And so we'll be looking for a feedback session for all of us. So that's the structure that we're in. Um, I don't think there'll be time for wrap up, but we'll, we'll see. <laughs> um, these are the seven principles. So uh, I'm just briefly going to go through them. Uh, th these have been around for some time. This is 1987 that this was proposed. If I do it quickly, Martin, you chip in if you think we need to explain anything else. This is his proposal, and I gather it's been picked up in quite a number of other reports. So this is actually a fairly well-respected um, set of ideas, if a bit general. I've, I've applied it. We've applied it to a new module that we were running this year in the autumn term. And uh, it shows me, it's, it's good principles, but re in reality, this is why I'm saying pick an example and assess it. The, the reality is the detail that you, that you as you apply your, in your own case. And we've applied it to everything in the course that we were running. That's something called the management practice and skills. But I think the focus for this session is strictly the coursework <coughs> assignments and feedback if we've got the time to go for it. So these are the principles. So uh, anything within your modules and teaching that encourage this is this is a, supposedly the basis for getting student engagement, for increasing, improving, developing, encouraging student engagement. And this was one of our principal aims for this uh, new design that we're running. So first principle: it, it, anything that encourages contact between us, the faculty, and the students. Uh, but also between the students. So you've got the two things here that you really, whatever you're doing, encourages them to work together, to, to talk to each other, to interact. Uh, active learning means that uh, we're looking for them to do something. So we're interested in involving the students very much. Gives prompt feedback. This is a problem for all of us, isn't it? I mean, one of my, when I went back and critiqued what we'd done in the autumn term, uh, we weren't doing badly, I have to say, but, we, but we've all decided, that there's a group of tutors involved in this course, uh, that we've got to get there faster. You know, that the feedback to be effective for the next uh, um, coursework assignment has to be fast. Um, emphasizes time on task. I think that's simply giving time. Uh, in their, important, their perception is that it's, they've got to meet the deadlines, but also got to put the time in. This is the students need to put the time in if they're going to learn. We need to communicate high expectations. Apparently there's a huge correlation between a learning gain, if I can put it like that, and as it were, the expectations of the course. Now I'm talking about the whole degree course, not just the module, because you, you, you're, you're embedded in, a, in the background situation. And then respects the diverse talents and ways of learning of your student group, as well as us, I think, the, uh, um, the lecturing group. Um, so I'm coming back to, I'll leave this up once we get started, but uh, this is the structure we're aiming for. I've got form one, which, are, which is a, uh, however, whatever size you go for, this is the, my concern. I came to the conclusion you've just got to 
the analysis doesn't make sense unless you pick a specific example. So that means picking a module, picking perhaps one or two of the coursework assignments, depending on how many you actually set, so that you could analyze it in some depth. So if you're a group of uh, three or so, one of you's got to, as it were, say, let's do my module, let's do my coursework, and the rest uh, chip in and help give feedback. I think that's the way to do it. And form two is, uh, is again, the Chickory and Gamson principles. So that is picking a p the coursework. This is applying the principles once you've got it. Uh, and you need to, uh, somebody needs to be ready to talk at the end of this. So before I launch you off, I thought what I would do, and I can, I'll hand this out at the, end of the, um, at the end of the session as well, is just, I did a very, very um, cut down attempt at the two forms myself with respect to this module that I, I've been talking about. So I'm going to um, just move you over to the, hopefully to the visualizer. Um, form one, I, uh, uh, Martin and I discussed this at some length yeah. yesterday, didn't we? Is it worth me giving some, a, bit, a bit more background? Because this, this is one of the things which hits the students when they first come um, in on their first year. And looking at that, this was seven, um, seven, 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 seven principles. One of the things that's important is this is a very discrete, very diverse group of students. So they're going through these almost sort of group forming stages at this stage. So part of what we want to do is to integrate all these principles with the sort of stages they're going through, with the diversity. And also, they have to get into the mode of what it's like being at university. So there's an element of dealing with the transition from wherever they've been before, which very often isn't A-levels, it's somewhere different to university. Yes, uh, I guess that I, what I should have added is we've been doing a lot of work on this, and this is very definitely a first year module, transition module. And, one, and we're lucky in a way that part of one of the... Uh, so this is the sort of level of description I think you need to make. You need to tell us what degree you're picking, what's the subject of the module, um, whether it's a first year really or not. Class size, ours was a large class size of 120, but the course structure was a combination of lecture and small group tutorials. So we had split them into groups of 20. So that, we tried to solve this... Uh, endemic problem of having too big a group to do a lot of interactive stuff, okay? And it was roughly 50-50, so 50% lecture, 50% tutorial work. Uh, the learning aims were quite uh, ambitious. <laughs> we were looking to teach this subject of organizational behavior and management, and that, a core aspect of that is team working anyway. So that one of the first things we got into was developing their skills of team working. But we were also aiming for skills acquisition, generally business skills like presentation, as well as team working and so forth. And of course, a, a practice. We don't want just a theory, we want, we want them to apply it. So the, the, the aim that, if I'm giving you, these are all the learning aims of this particular module, which was a double module, it's quite extensive. Um, what I would, so what I suggest is you pick, each of your group, pick something, be ready, I think, to uh, just to know what the learning aims were and the core, and the roughly what the core structure. Was it mostly lecture? Was it mostly exercise classes? What was it? Okay. Uh, and then I suggest in the time we've got, you've really only got time, I think, for maybe one, maybe two. I put, picked uh, two assignments that we went for. Uh, one, one I called coursework one where we just got them to assess their personality. We, they went online, did their own personality assessment, and then they had to log that, uh, you know, they had to submit it. Um, how did that fit with learning objectives? Um, th this is detailed learning objectives. The overall aims are skills development. So I think these links, I came to conclusion, making these links are absolutely key, uh, because we're going to go back and rethink all the coursework assignments we set this year, again, to try and plug them into this as, as closely as we can, into these objectives. So here our objectives were self-knowledge, beginning critical s reflection skills here, using Moodle, and uh, creating their understanding of themselves as individuals in order to contribute it to the team. Uh, feedback. In this case, we didn't give a lot of feedback. We just had someone checking that everyone had done it. And they'd done it, and that they'd answered. With, they had a form and so forth. That they'd done a reasonably sophisticated go at uh, at assessing what they, what it meant. Martin was one of the tutors and can expatiate a little bit more on this. Mm -hmm. I've 
this is my set of six criteria for feedback. Timeliness. I think we were only moderately fast on that because we were actually still designing yes. the course a bit as we went along. So we should have been fast. We could have done that faster, actually. We could have got someone to sit down and do it. Well, what was the purpose? I don't think it was very clear to the students, although it was very clear to us that this was an important building block for their team, work, for creating the teams. Channel was over the VLE. Uh, so was it summative or formative? It was both. Because the tutors discussed what they'd done. Uh, the team began in the next course, where you'll see they discussed it. Uh, but the depth was very, was very, very facile. You know, it wasn't very in depth. I'm not quite sure how much more. That's one thing we've got to discuss yeah. next year. How much more in depth we can go there. I mean, I think this was probably primarily form formative, wasn't it? In that it was supposed to help. It was them, primarily was formative. A, yes. We did get a number at the end. It's partly if it. It was only five percent of marks, so it wasn't. Yeah. You know, we make, made it clear the important thing was that they did it for the team. Mm -hmm. Now the second coursework, so I'm only giving you two, we actually did quite a few other things, was a team task. Uh, we got them to do something in the tutorial class, and then, but the report was their assessment of how the team had worked. So they, got, they, they knew how well they'd done on the task, that was done, in, that, they got that straight away. Um, but the, um, re what we really wanted was their team reflection uh, on the process, and um, you know, what, how they would how the team was operating, um, so they were beginning to ask it where they got to on the forming, storming, so forth, um, stages. Uh, so this was the beginning, if I look at learning objectives, uh, application of the beginning of organisational behaviour theory, um, practical experience, so we got them to apply this experience and think about OB theory of team working, um, and, and obviously a fair amount of critical reflection, this is very much in line with one, you know, the theory, practice, and skills. Um, each tutor, so I'm looking at feedback. Each tutor ran the team task session, gave them feedback on how well they'd done on the task, um, and then each tutor marked the team report, okay, and gave them summative feedback. I think they also gave uh, quite a lot of formative yeah. feedback. Isn't that right, Martin? I so During that yes. tutorial yeah. session, yeah. yeah. So if I assess this. Uh, I don't think we were very fast. We were very good on the formative feedback in the tutorial session, but we were pretty slow on marking the reports, I yeah. think, partly because we were getting to, we had to get six tutors to agree on the same standards. The channel was both in the class and the Moodle. Um, depth, I think erratic is what I'd say at this point, yeah. but I think if we got ourselves better organised, you know, we were organising as it were as we went along, because this was a new course. I think there is room for very much for him improving this. So uh, this is the sort of thing I'd like you to um, think about for Form 1. Now let's just look at Form 2. Form 2 is, uh, and let's try to simplify it down a little bit. Form 2 is the, just as I talk us through it, and get it all on screen, hopefully. Well, I won't get it all on screen, but I'll do it a bit at a time. But I've just gone through, I've actually done this for a report on this course. Uh, I've gone through the principles and said, all right, uh, and I have a much more complex thing than I'm showing you here. I'm just talking about what that coursework one and coursework two, mm -hmm. how, did it, how did it help here? So I think you can see that these team courseworks offer a lot on this contact business. So we re really do resolve, the by, by getting them to do teamwork, I have to say that teamwork presents other problems. You know, there are not notably getting teams to work. So if I did the critique here, of, um, so I'm going to go down a bit like this way. Uh, and that's what I, I think we all should be doing, by the way, is saying, all right, how does this support these seven principles? Can we do it any better? Or should we change, start thinking of changing? So in a way, this is just, I think, an opportunity for you to take an example of your own and do a little bit of analysis on it. A bit. I have to say that when I did this analysis, which I was doing, for an overall report on this particular module, it did, it, apart from the obvious things like we got a lot of feedback from the students on, it did make me think very, very closely mm. about how we can tighten this up, you know, actually make it work a lot better. And also, I think, where, where we need, where we can actually start making some changes, mm. structural changes, not just, uh, not just tightening up what we're actually doing. So I think the tutorials were essential to get this contact between students and faculty, uh, we had to get that 120 students down to a smaller group. 
and that's uh, and the task, the team task, also uh, obviously um, very helpful for creating, you know, getting. That was one of the aims was to get these students talking to each other, getting to know each other as fast as possible. This is the first term of the first year of their university course, so creating a community of learning, which I believe is really what this is after, was to, uh, has been an explicit aim for quite a while. However, the teams are key. And, uh, and one of the outcomes of this analysis of, uh, that I've just finished is that team working, we really got to throw a lot more thought, but we have to on this module, I'm not saying you do, uh, into making, find, you know, establishing what doesn't, what's never going, what's always going to be a problem, and making sure that they work, or that we pick up dysfunctional teams quickly and we do something about them very, very as quickly as possible. Uh, active learning, obviously activity-based, any activity-based, which I think uh, gets them out of doing things individually, in my view. Um, but I mean, even individual um, practical applications can be done, and we are now beginning to think about the balance between individual and teams. We think we got it. We've got too much teams. We need more individual next time. Okay. Um, but the design of the project is key because the design of your coursework assignment is what uh, actually realises your teaching, your learning objectives, isn't it? Your learning aims. So that, that again told me we've got to go back and really think. We had a lot of things on hand which would be used elsewhere, but you know, putting them together for this course was a first. And I think we've got, I don't know if, uh, how much you agree with that, Martin, but we've got scope for really rethinking those yes. practical... Um, Definitely, yes. Um, prompt feedback, well, that's, that's a problem, isn't it, for all of us. With the, having six tutors, we should be able to do it because they do it for each of their teams. Where we get to doing individual coursework, we're going to have to think about organising that. Uh, I mean, there was one piece of individual coursework where we just had one tutor. Well, there was a the piece of coursework that impaired, but we had one tutor mark the whole lot, and pretty well sort of did the sleep for the weekend to turn them around quickly. But you can only do that so often. I mean, that yes, you, know, you can only do that about once in, for one module, yes. I believe. And he, I think he found it too much. He didn't. He, yeah, I mean, I'm, sure, I'm, sure, I'm sure we can ask him to do that more than once a year. And just an interesting comment, you'll be interested in We, I suggested they did it in pairs. It was a, a conventional report, you know, a relatively um, on, on a, theoretic, a bit of theory mm -hmm. from management and organisational behaviour. They all did a different, we gave a to different topic really to every each pair. We put them into pairs because I thought they would find that more interesting and learn a lot more from each other. But when we asked the question at the end of the uh, module, because we had a question and answer session at the end, um, something, they, the class split almost exactly 50-50. 50% said, yes, they like doing it in pairs, and the other 50% said, no, we wanted to do it as individuals, you know? And then when we asked the pairs, because I just allocated pairs pretty much randomly, uh, within the tutor group and so on, uh, when we asked the pairs how they wanted to be allocated, yeah. about half of them wanted to pick their own partner, yes. but the other yeah. half wanted to be allocated. <laughs> so, you know, we... We, we, haven't, uh, we haven't come to a decision for next year. Time on task, uh, we did, we did have, make a big thing about deadlines. They had to get things in online, on time, mostly through Moodle. Everything was done through Moodle, so you know, it, there was no argument. They yeah. either had it in or they didn't on time. So that's the, one of the great benefits, I think, of Moodle. I think the other thing is because we had this series of deadlines spread through the term, yeah. that we kept the pace up, and they didn't necessarily like having deadlines all the way along, but it didn't mean they couldn't forget about this module. They had to put time into things. Yes, they had to do it. Things all the time. So communication, um, I mean, there was a lot of communication. I'm going to finish off now because I want to leave you time to think about this. Uh, the diversity issue, our coursework one and two did address it, but I can't say we did anything more on diversity particularly than that. I think we planted the idea that they're working as a team, that a well-functioning team has Yes. A, a well-functioning team can benefit from, from, from differences. I think the one thing which, uh, the one thing which I would say is that one of the teams where I was a tutor uh, did a presentation. They talked about different roles. They said so and so was for those of you familiar with the work of Belvin, was a completer finisher. So I'm finished everything. So and so was a plant. Somebody who comes up with everything. And one of the people they named their presentation as having been a social loafer as somebody who <laughs> didn't actually yeah. contribute. So they were quite blunt yes, yes, that was about people whose contribution to the team 
was not, which I think is probably healthy, being able to be that yes. blunt about it. Yeah. So um, I know we've, we've taken a bit of time there to explain a little bit behind it, but I mean, how, many, how many of you have already met um, Chickering and Gamson? A couple. Yeah, so, because I hadn't, before the beginning of this year, although we knew that student engagement was what we were aiming for, I hadn't really understood. So this analysis seems to me, that's what I'm suggesting in a way would be useful to you, actually does make you at least consider it very closely. Mm. We've only got about a quarter of an hour, but yeah. I think you could do something in a quarter of an hour. Do you want to try and uh, raise convenient groups? Would you like to tell us what, what's the module or degree that you're looking okay. at? Okay, so the, the degree is undergraduate journalism, and the module we looked at uh, is Introduction to Journalism, which is a 30 credit module in the first year. Um, so a big module with a lot in it. Um, and the problems we were, we were talking about and trying to address um, were I mean, jump in at some, at some point if I'm getting this wrong, but possibly a mismatch. I mean, this is very practical stuff. We're training people to work as journalists. It's not theoretical. Um, so there's possibly a mismatch between what we demand as professional journalists and what the students can do. So the traditional way is to throw them in at the deep end, get them out talking to people, researching stories, um, the big problem is that they're too terrified to go out of the building a lot of the time. <laughs> and seriously. So, um, what we designed into the course this year, um, and it was partially successful, was to actually throw away the idea of just coming up with a great story and writing a report on the area. So, they get into groups of five and they go out, find a local person. Uh, details about the area, a big sort of research job. But it doesn't have to be written as an essay, there's no, you know, trying to take that sort of pressure off. The problems we still have are, and what we're trying to do, the, the learning aims I would say are developing confidence, interviewing skills, listening skills, and trying to suss out what a story actually is. The problem we have is that people are still coming back and kind of faking it a bit, interviewing each other, interviewing their mum, interviewing other students, or even making interviews up, heaven, heaven forbid. Um, oh, fiction. Yeah, yeah. Fiction. <laughs> it's a completely different course. Um, <laughs> so what we were trying to look at was how we could address those problems. And one of the things that we came up with was perhaps we should break down the groups even further because even within groups of five people, people are getting lost. Our idea of putting groups together is that's why you have to work as journalists and it, and it pulls people along but it doesn't, people still hide. So the, I suppose one of the things we came up with was breaking down the roles within the group further. Yeah, breaking down the tasks as well in the so they actually understood what was being asked of them. Yeah, very, very interesting. Well, we have to move on. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Any, any final <laughs> overarching <laughs> comment before? Did you find... It addressed the number of the did, did seven it, principles. Yes. You, so you found looking at principles yeah, of interest. Yeah, yeah. It just showed that the communi communicates high expectations were perhaps what the expectations were and not students were capable of maybe yeah. being yes. looking at. In fact, the high expectations were a problem in the sense in that oh. I think they're going, it's yeah. up there, I can't get to it. So yes. our expectations don't match There's. their social skills a lot yeah. of the time. Mm. These are these one of our expectations is just talking to somebody who is a sort of, a sort of stranger in the street, which is quite something. Anyway. Mm. Yeah, uh, group two. Uh, uh, I, I, very quickly, yes. um, this is an academic development program, so it's working with staff. Uh, it's a module on curriculum development where five members of staff from different disciplines are put together with the view of creating a new multidisciplinary module. Uh, they initially hate it. Um, <laughs> and, still hate it at the end. and I think that really is the issue for, that comes out of using this and, and taking the, the theory into practice. Well, the big question comes with, I think, the last one, which is a, a similar issue for you, I think, the, the relevance that some of the diverse learners see in this. Mm -hmm. Some of them see the point in it, engage in it, and others still say, I see no point in doing this. Um, and it's how do you make it more relevant? 
we didn't get to that, so I don't have an answer. Yeah, no, no. But th so you found this framework quite useful for oh, yeah, importing. It helps us analyse and allow us to start discussions. Yes. And I think the staff we're often not very good at having those discussions. We do make assumptions that I know what I'm doing. And yes. Yes. And yes. Yeah, it's quite useful. Okay. Thanks very much indeed. That's two very impressive uh, contributions. Who's going to talk from the back room? I believe I am. <laughs> this is the coursework for the operational research point that I teach to final year undergraduates who are doing actuarial sciences or maths, it's an elective. Um, they have get 20% of their marks for a report on a case which has numbers as well as words and it's supposed to mimic the kind of thing that I've done in real life as an operational researcher. Um, so they are given a description of a, of a uh, business situation uh, have a question asked and they have to find a solution and it's about as helpful as that students they have to find how to do it decide what methods to use and there may or may not even be methods that they've been taught in the quantity part of the module so they've got to <coughs> um, and make their decisions about how to handle it uh, find a solution um, using the methods that, are, that, that make sense and report and all of that is a little bit disconcerting for us <coughs> Uh, the math students haven't written um, essays since they were at school, and writing report is, is new for them. Uh, they haven't been taught management, and this is very much management oriented. Um, it's, it only encourages contact between students and faculty very modestly, because when they say, how should we do it, they say, you have to find out yourself. So the interaction is limited there until I give them feedback on what they've done. Um, reciprocity, reciprocity and cooperation between students I think is important, though because the module, the, because the case is fairly limited <coughs> in scope, um, there's not as much potential for different approaches as I would like to provide. Um, nevertheless, I think that by working together they are able to do something better than if they worked alone, and so they are asked form their own groups of three to do it. Um, they seem to be willing to do that. Um, and I think we get very little complaints about who's in the group because they form their own. Um, I think it encourages them to, to, to learn and I do see references to things they've got from reading, though I have to say that's in the minority. Um, it does feed back things that I've talked about how you should approach this kind of problem. Um, but that's not quite everything you're looking for in active learning, I think. Um, they get feedback within a week or two so that I can comment on the feedback in lectures by the end of the, the, the module. They have to report by week eight, I mark it by week nine or week 10, and we talk about it in week 11. Um, that seems quick enough. It's not as quick as I do for other modules, but it seems acceptable. Um, and because I've got to read and report on these, these reports, I won't put much of them down. Um, it, it's about as good as I can manage. Um, Emphasise this time or task. We can talk about this. We? You don't have to go through all no the problem. sections. Is there any one overarching conclusion from having looked at it from this angle, Michael? No, we didn't have enough time. <laughs> <laughs> Do you find that, time is this potentially useful? Fantastic. Well, find it very interesting. Um, so I felt that encouraged me in stretching the students. Um, diverse talents and ways of learning a little bit, but again, that's limited by the scope sure. of the case. Okay. Only the last group stand between us and the coffee. Yeah. So <laughs> very, very quickly, we talked about Roberta's course um, on the speech and language therapy mm -hmm. course. It's um, we talked about a second year BSc course in speech communications and swallowing disorders, and just a a a three week block of this really, um, which was specifically looking at stammering disorders. And what Roberta does is she gives a, a case study, a video, but also some context, written up context about that family situation that a child with a speech disorder um, to the students who choose pairs and they work on diagnosing and analyzing and writing up this case study the, the, of this particular child. 
Um, so we, we found that it is very good in encouraging peer working because they, they do this as pairs, they are both kind of initially apparently in speech therapy um, it's professionals come to very different conclusions about what the case is and so they are trying this actively out by these two people kind of compare their findings on it. So it's, it's very good on peer um, reciprocity. It's not great on encouraging contact between students and faculties. There's 45 students in a tutorial. It's not called a tutorial class, but in effect, mm. that, that's what it is. So the contact is more between students rather than between students and staff. But it, it very much encourages active learning, and it's very clear for students where the purpose is. Maybe that's the, the good thing about having a very applied course, different to, I'm from sociology, different to maybe journalism as well. Students know what the purpose is, and it also comes with a set of professional guidelines from your professional body. So that's kind of useful. Um, it, in terms of respecting diverse ways of learning, we thought, well, it possibly does that because it kind of has uh, some visual input, etc. But I guess it's also constrained by those professional kind of um, tasks. All the f the assessment is summative, so at the end they submit a report. I think there might be a problem with it. I don't know what you think about the feedback. I think there would be it would be great if we had more of a chance to interact with the students at the end and just have much more time to spend on picking them apart and redoing and things like that. Be, that would be a real bonus. Because so, in a way you're always moving on to the next exactly, thing. You know, okay, you didn't do that very well. Never mind. Let's go. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Very interesting, yeah. yes. So any overarching comment from this sort of analysis? I found it very useful. Yeah. 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 Certainly, you know, you try, you, and, you try and do things right and then you think, no, I haven't done that, I haven't done yeah. that, I haven't done that. So you always need your perceptual set to be stretched yes. a little yes. bit. Yes. 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 Okay, well thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Fascinating. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.